Hi all, today we are going to learn about an open source library called the PyCaret which helps in building end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines. So uh, based on our experience uh, in the past while trying to solve a machine learning problem, uh, most of our time is spent in uh, cleaning the data either by removing the outliers or uh, transforming the uh, categorical variables and followed by this exhaustive uh, exercise of cleaning the data we tend to build the model try out different models to solve the same problem and identify which is the best performing model for the given underlying data. Followed by picking the best model, we kind of identify the hyperparameters and then tune them in order to identify the best parameters which fit in, which improves our expected uh, performance of the model. And then we finally save it as a pickle file. And uh, so most of these tasks, uh, which we do it on a regular basis, are kind of automated by built-in functions uh, by using this PyCaret library. So let us quickly jump on uh, what exactly PyCaret does uh, by taking an example problem of a binary classification. So the first step as always, uh, let's install the required libraries PyCaret and SHAP. Uh, SHAP is a library which tends to give us the uh, Shapley additive values to explain or interpret the model performance, which I'll be explaining in a while. So let's quickly install the required libraries. And once installed, uh, let me import the PyCaret. Uh, the PyCaret has multiple data sets for practice. Uh, so there are close to around uh, 30 data sets dealing with different problems, starting from a binary classification problem to multi-class classification problem, clusterings and uh, regressions, etc. So let me uh, take the um, data set juice. So the moment I use the function get underscore data of PyCaret, what happens is, so the juice data gets uh, saved to the data frame data. So what exactly is this juice data set? So this is a widely used one. Uh, so these are the metrics we have. So the target variable which we are looking at is the purchase, whether uh, uh, the column purchase is having two values CH and MM so essentially it's a binary classification problem so the CH stands for the brand Citrus Hill and MM is for Minute Maid so the target variable is purchase where we are trying to identify given a set of parameters whether a user will go for uh, buying a Minute Maid or a Citrus Hill so uh, the uh, different uh, columns of data we have are the week of purchase uh, the price of uh, Citrus Hill and the price of Minute Maid and any discount is offered on uh, Citrus Hill or the Minute Maid and uh, any uh, special is given for the Citrus Hill or uh, Minute Maid and uh, the customer brand loyalty uh, for uh, Citrus Hill. So the expectation is if uh, the customer is, is loyal towards Citrus Hill, the possibility of him buying uh, Citrus Hill is higher. And similarly, what is the final sale price of these two products and what is the price difference? And uh, if any discount is given, uh, basically a derivative of these particular columns the we are calculating the percentage discounts and uh, finally on which stores have been built or what they purchased from so we have uh, five possible stores and there's a special mention about uh, store 7 on where a sale had occurred or not so that is our uh, data set so as seen here uh, we do have the purchase the week of purchase the store ID on which it is purchased from the corresponding prices of those two products and the discounts offered and the uh, uh, the loyalty of that uh, of a particular customer uh, uh, for Citrus Hill. What are the sale prices? The price differences, etc. So this is the data set we are going to use. So we have close to 1,070 data points across 19 columns. So the first step is to uh, set up an experiment uh, for PyCaret to kind of use this data and get a sense on what kind of model are we dealing with. So uh, before starting the problem, we do understand that this is a classification problem. So we are importing the classification functions straight from PyCaret. So we need to set up an experiment. Uh, this is similar to uh, setting up an experiment like in SageMaker. Uh, this will be familiar to the people who have worked with AWS. So as seen here, uh, under the setup uh, function, I'm passing the data on which we are going to work with and I'm specifying what the target variable is. And to uh, kind of, uh, for, the, uh, for the audit purposes, we do specify whether the logging of the experiment is needed and uh, their experiment name and I specify something called the normalize is true. So essentially what normalize true parameter does is so for all the uh, metrics we do have in our data set uh, it does it does z-score normalization and I have specified feature selection as true so what it does is it will calculate the correlation and kind of drops the features which are not uh, helpful in predictions. So let me see how 
uh, let me show you how actually this PyCaret helps in identifying the data type automatically. So the moment I set up an experiment and run, it gives us the initial analysis where it has identified each of the column type. For example, it has mentioned uh, the store ID as categorical, the week of purchase is numeric, so as seen here and store ID it has picked up as categorical variable, whereas the prices of that as they are continuous, you can see it has picked up as numeric. And uh, coming to this uh, special ingredients uh, added uh, to Citrus Hill or uh, Minute Maid, it's again a binary value, it has picked up as categorical. So in this way, it for each of the uh, columns specified, it picks them automatically. What kind of uh, data type, the underlying data type is for this particular column. So let me quickly show, for example, for the store, uh, we do have something, it has picked up as categorical. So for store, it, it might be having multiple values, more than uh, two levels, so it has picked up as categorical. So if the user is happy with respect to the automatically uh, picked or inferred data types by PyCaret, we have to press the enter key, which gets accepted. Okay, And then, so these are the different parameters which we can set and pass as a part of our experiment. For example, uh, the train test split is 70-30 ratio. And uh, if you want to deal with normalization, I had set it as true. And so z-score gets automatically applied to. And uh, in case if there is uh, a highly imbalanced data set between our two classes, we can specify the fixed imbalance method as true. So automatically smart gets applied. So in this way, it's more of more of kind of a plug and play by Carrot. And uh, once we uh, have the uh, transformations done on the data set, I'm pulling out the training data set and let me give a flavor of what actually the training data set looks like now. So as seen here, the moment I run this training data set, all I had done till now is I just set up an experiment. Uh, PyCaret showed me the kind of uh, variable inference data type it had showed. And the moment I selected it, it sets up an experiment with these data. So as seen here, if we, if we remember for the store, uh, it had picked up as categorical. So as seen here, it had picked up, it had created the dummy columns. Essentially, it had done a one hot encoding for the store. It showed as a store underscore one, store underscore three, etc. So it, it kind of did a uh, one hot encoding. So what if the user wants to specify what kind of encoding it has to done? Or in the sense, if it ha if he had identified that uh, the automatically inferred data type for the underlying column is not the expected way. So we can, the user can specify what he, what he can do. For example, for the same data set, I had just opened a new tab and I'm pulling in the same data. I'm picking up the unique values for the column store. So as seen here, we have uh, five levels. I'm telling or uh, informing the PyCaret by passing the parameter ordinal features where I'm specifying, uh, where I'm specifying to PyCaret, pick the values of store as ordinal features. And I'm also specifying a couple of more parameters like handling unknown categorical variables. So. So this is a very uh, common uh, problem which we might have. Uh, for example, uh, if there is a category, let's say uh, we have a categorical value for, uh, I mean, a column called uh, pin code. And let's say there are 10 values and we have trained the data. And uh, in future, uh, in the uh, in our validation data sets, if an unknown pin code comes, how to handle it? So uh, we essentially, we can set it as a single parameter here where I'm specifying handling unknown categorical variable as true. And what value to be fixed for values which are unknown, I'm picking up the least frequent value which is occurring in that particular column. So the moment I am passing uh, these values and setting up my experiment, what happens is, now if you look at this store column, as you can see, the, uh, it does not have the dummy columns now. Essentially, we do have a single column where the uh, specified uh, values, the ordinal values are sorted out in this order. We have a single column. So in this way, we have the flexibility to even uh, tell PyCaret on how to pick each of the uh, column values. So once the training data set is ready, the we just look at the shape. As I said, uh, the default uh, train test split is 70-30, which is again configurable. And uh, for the uh, classification problem, uh, if I pass this particular model uh, models, function, as you can see, we have close to around uh, 17 models which can be used for classification purpose. Starting from the uh, uh, widely used logistic regression model uh, to our nay base and vector machines, support vector machines, to the tree-based models like the random forest classifiers or our uh, Adaboost 
the gradient boostings or the uh, light gradient boosting techniques all are at one go so essentially what what pycarat uh, provides us is with this all these models will be running on our data set at one go so the moment i specify uh, the function of compare models all the models are run at one go with uh, the different modeling uh, metrics which we would like to look at the model performance metrics ranging from the accuracy the area under the curve recall precision f1 metrics are brought in a single table which gives the user uh, to decide which is the best performing model so uh, as seen here uh, so uh, logic regression model is the best performing one with in terms of accuracy and let me quickly uh, show what actually happens in my best model in sense what is actually saved so as seen here so they are sorted out based on the metric of accuracy the user can specify what's the metric of interest for him for example for an imbalanced uh, problems where we are more where we are more worried about the true positive classes we can specify either the recall or the f1 metric and they will be sorted accordingly so the now the best model which is picked uh, by my by carrot x is my logic regression model in case if the user wants to uh, store a model of his choice let's say that uh, the user wants to save uh, random forest model instead of the best performing one all we can do is simply we can specify create underscore model instead of compare models and pass the model name which needs to be passed for example so these are the model names which are specified in uh, uh, pycarat uh, the lr stands for logic regression so if i want to save logic regression i can pass lr here so once i am saving the random forest model uh, it's a five fold one and these are the metrics model performance metrics of the model so once it is saved so this is the uh, model and these are the parameters uh, within the model on which the values are taken and once we build a model and decide one uh, decide a particular model we do have the uh, choice of uh, improving the performance of the model by uh, tuning its hyperparameters so what exactly are these hyperparameters so hyperparameters tend to uh, penalize a model in case if the model is overfitting on our training data set or it can boost the improvements uh, or it can boost the performance of the model by actually improving or increasing the default metrics for example for random forest we the for example in this model we can see as seen here we do have uh, something called the n estimators which is set as 100 so will my will the performance of my model increase if i am setting this uh, parameter n estimator as 200 the possibility is yes and at the same time it might overfit my data so what so this entire exercise of finding what are the optimal uh, parameters uh, values which needs to be taken for each of the model is called the hyperparameter optimization exercise the best part is within uh, pycarat even this part is automated with a simple function called the tune underscore model so the moment i pass this random forest model into my tune it kind of fits in in a ten in a tenfold uh, exercise and as you can see the average accuracy of the model the mean average is jumped from 79% to 82%. So what are the metrics which got changed once I tuned the model? Let me quickly show the N estimators. So now the N estimator has jumped from 100 to 260. And the minimum sample split uh, for the decision tree to occur within the random forest. Earlier it was 2. Now it's bumped up to 5. So in this way we kind of this is generally a kind of manual exercise where we do uh, a random search. Uh, where we specify a range for each of these values and the uh, we get the best performing and identify the best performing wet metric but in pycarat it is automated and to look at the performance metrics even uh, it has inbuilt uh, plot functions for example for the uh, looking at the roc curve the plot underscore model will be by default will be giving me the roc curve if you want the confusion matrix we can pass the parameter plot is equal to confusion matrix and the feature importance among the features which are uh, going in to determine my target uh, variable uh, so loyal uh, ch is the metric which is giving the most important feature i mean it kind of uh, makes sense as well because a customer who is having higher loyalty towards uh, the citrus hill brand is expected to buy citrus hill more i mean that's the kind of metric followed by the price difference between the two so uh, interpreting uh, the uh, random forest model which we have built 
that's where now comes the Schaap value. So, so this uh, Schaap stands for Schaapli uh, additive uh, values. So, uh, what actually happens is it kind of uh, tries to explain the black box models on why a particular metric uh, or a feature is determining what should be the outcome of the target variable. Let me quickly show. Uh, so, the uh, Schaapli plot looks like this where along the y-axis we do have the uh, feature name and along the x-axis we do have the Shapley value. So essentially what it does is, so if, uh, so this is our midpoint, 0, 0.0, farther it is on the uh, left hand side any of the point, that is it is leaning more towards the class 0 and towards the right it's vice versa, that is more to the class 1. So let's see, uh, as you can see, if it's a kind of reddish value, it corresponds to high. If it's a bluish value, it corresponds to low. So the thing is, so if the loyal CH value is taking a very high value, the possibility of uh, the outcome, uh, the prediction is higher to be falling on the class zero. So to put it intuitively, so if a customer is uh, bound to have uh, higher uh, uh, loyalty towards citrus hill, so he specified to come towards class zero. Class zero might be the possibility of purchasing my uh, CH, where my target variable is CH. So, uh, similarly, in case if the loyal CH value is too low, the blue corresponds low value here. So that means it's more lean towards the class one. So uh, let's see uh, how it comes with the uh, sale price of minute made. So it kind of evenly distributed uh, in the sense if the sale price is high, so he's more, he's moving uh, more uh, less towards class zero, but whereas the sale price is lower, is more intuited towards uh, class one. Now comes the best part, the price difference part. So as seen here, if the price difference is high, uh, then they are more lean towards class zero, and if the price difference is on the more on the lower side, they are uh, they are more towards the uh, class one side. So in this way, Shapley kind of provides us an explanation on how each of these features help in determining uh, why whether they are lean towards the class zero or class one in a classification problem. So once uh, the best model is picked up, we can save it at one go. Uh, using the save function, it kind of saves us as a pickle file, which can be used for future uh, loading the pickle file and coming up with the fresh predictions. Thank you.